staying in contact with Elisa. She's having a little bit of a problem getting in, but she should be here soon. Hi guys. <laughs> it says wait for host. Oh, she's grabbing a drink. She'll be right here. How are you all doing? Oh, you could have taken your time getting your coffee. It's fine. I don't want to. You want me to have my coffee, girl? Okay. You go get your coffee. You go. <laughs> no, all I saw was it's like click here to join. So I wasn't sure. I guess that's it. And let's see. So I will put the actual URL instead of click to join in my little document here. So hopefully that works. Um, uh, yeah, it says H. Oh, yes, big long URL. Okay, hang on just a minute. Take your time. It's just us. <laughs> we love you. So you guys want to hear a real quick story before we go live on YouTube? It's really funny. So I have this fascinating obsession, like straight up obsession with hot air balloons. And in St. George, it's a thing, you know, I live in Utah and, um, you know, it's so silly because I have friends who are hot air balloon pilots and you know, all I have to do is just drive to Colorado and be like, Hey, Kim, you remember me? Could you take me up in your balloon? And she'd be like, yes, except that's seven hours away. Like I want the magic of like, and the mystery of like meeting a new pilot, like here in St. George and having it happen like magically right in front of my face. And people love to fly balloons here. So there's always balloons. Um, as soon as the weather gets warm, you'll see them. So every day when I take it's home to school, I follow these all balloons right. all the way home. I follow them. And today, Eric helped me catch one. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hi, Pamela. I miss you guys. I was oh, telling them a story holiday. that Eric helped me do. It was so fun. Really? What was yeah. it? Because I am obsessed with hot air balloons. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And I want to get up in one, and I never have. And um, I, what I do in my town is I love them so much that I'm kind of weird about it. I follow them with my car in hopes that they will land. And I'm like, hey, oh. hey. And hopes that they will crash. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. So basically, one landed in front of me today because Eric's helped me find them. He was like, that one, that one's going to oh. land. <laughs> And they waved to me and everything. And of course, they lifted off again because they couldn't get to me. And we were in front of a barbed wire fence. But your son helped oh. find a balloon today. And it landed and said hi to me. Oh, that's so sweet. Oh, my God. That's weird. Because this weekend, I think it was, uh, we watched uh, this thing called the Aeronauts. The first people that went up in, in hot air balloons. It's, yeah. it's I guess it's, um, maybe it's uh, fiction based on truth. But it was really good. See, now I love it. It was kind of scary, too. I mean, find out. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, you guys remember that um, we are going to answer questions from the YouTube thing plus the Zoom QA. I can't do the chat and all that. I'm just not good enough. I do not pay any money for top chat, et cetera, et cetera. I want to click on live on YouTube. See my YouTube peeps. I love you all. Come on. Come on, you can do it, YouTube. Where are you bees? Let me see. Oh, there we go. You got them? Uh, choose your brand. <laughs> I have a new, uh, y'all uh, subscribe to my new pathetic little channel. Well, right, right now, I'm so young. Yeah, Two you and doing? a half dogs, please. Good channel. Where I share my babies. Well, oh, she's they'll so get good. there. <laughs> so good with them. It's amazing. <laughs> I love my babies. I do. They love All right. Them. Preparing your life, setting up your webinar for YouTube Live. We can go ahead and start if you want with the um, Q&A. Want okay. to? Yeah. Sure. Hi, Eric. I love you. I love you. He says he's Are you sure. <laughs> okay, we have uh, Amanda. Mom is what he said. <laughs> I'm just kidding you. Um, Amanda Patterson. Hi, Amanda. Uh, hi, Lisa. Hi, Eric. I'm speaking on behalf of my father, Clifford Kahn. Recently, he and other family members have learned of a new first cousin via Ancestry.com. Oh, exciting. This cousin named Shirley Mincy, until now, was never known about. 
she has informed us her mother's uh, name was Maggie Grace Gar Garrett. After much thought, they have narrowed down Shirley's father to one of two men in the family, but both are deceased. Oh, my father believes it could be his uncle named Albert Beard, nicknamed Junior. And so my father would like to ask Junior, is he in fact the father of Shirley? And if so, does he have any messages for my father? There are a lot of things that are shame oriented around that scenario. Not for me. I wanted to protect Maggie. Is that Junior talking? Yes. Ah, okay. Yeah. He said, I wanted to protect Maggie. I want at that time, you know, we protect each other's reputation and, you know, a woman's reputation during that time specifically was of utmost significance and always is. So that's her privacy wow. and it's her business. And um, these are things that I wish for Shirley's sake that she had known, but for Maggie's sake, we had to just, I knew that everyone would find out when Maggie passed her body. I knew that everyone would find, and now you have, and now Shirley will be thrilled to know this information. She only knows about one of you right now. And oh. she decided to meet one of you very soon. So she knows. Did she, did she have it out of, maybe out of wet, wedlock? Is that what you're saying? Um, there wasn't even a wedlock. It was straight up hidden. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Got it. Got it. Okay. Uh, if, if Any messages? Uh, um, those were the messages to that, the That's it. Yeah. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. Anonymous. Mr. Anonymous. It's a very common name. excited to meet one of them soon, basically. Oh, okay. Sorry about the secret. <laughs> uh, I, this should be no secrets. I have been seeing reptilians in dreams, and it is strange. I'm saying it, there should be no secrets among family and friends. Okay, well, not many. Okay, back up. Yeah. I have been seeing reptilians in dreams, and it is strange. I'm noticing I'm seeing them when uh, before I go to sleep. I noticed that I saw one that looked like a lizard iguana last night. Why do I see reptilians at night uh, in mid-trance between sleep? What is the purpose of these reptilians? Eric said, what is the purpose of you? They're watching you. They're oh. watchers. They want to know the same thing. They want to know the same thing about their fascination with being sentient. You are sentient. They are what is called a non-sentient being. They learn and evolve through not feeling, but through intellect, through their brains, through their neurological systems and different methods of learning. You learn through your emotions. Well, you're supposed to, except for when you're trying to honor your reptilian blame brain and be more like them. So <laughs> this is incredibly important for you to understand that you can tap into any degree of awareness in any dimensional field depending upon your learning and depending upon what your is your fear highest or is your love highest what is your emotional frequency what is your heart telling you is your highest method of learning that will dictate what you see and your brain, it's not really the cause of it. It's just in between an experience. So when you're in between sleeping and waking, your brain does this interesting thing and it's science. This isn't about, you know, anything, you know, uh, that you guys call spiritual. This isn't about that science is spirit and spirit is science. Basically your brain is giving you degrees of awareness that you don't have when it's covering your awareness because you're too awake and because you're too aware in one level of you. And the other level of you can see and hear and feel and sense things based upon your sentience. If you're afraid of these beings, you will see the beings that you're afraid of most because of law of attraction and law of reflection and all universal laws in your environment. So this isn't to scare you. This isn't to make things good or bad. This is just your alignment in your unique frequency. This is what this is. You've thought about it and your, your energy was strong enough to pull it into your field of awareness. That is all. And they are scientists who are watching you learn. Hmm, interesting. I don't know why on the uh, YouTube live, I keep clicking go live and it says setting up your webinar for YouTube live. And then it goes through and then it takes me right back to. Oh, 
that's weird. It says you're live, but I guess it just really okay. Well, let me just go to my actual um, page. <coughs> see, uh, all right. So, are these real reptiles? Or are they just spirits? Um, he said they're as real as you. Okay. <clears throat> well, yeah, but are they reptiles? Are they actual reptile spirits or reptilian spirits? Here's the thing he says about awareness and what all of you on this planet are learning right now. If you can think it and you can believe it, it becomes awareness and it becomes real for you. You know, uh -huh. so everything that you're creating in the movies, there's a, there's a being out there that you just created this out there in some dimensional existence that you are powerful enough to create into form. So do you believe it's real or not? You know, I believe that what you saw was quite real. And those are beings that are, they have form. They are called watchers. They observe you because they are learning about, you're fascinating them. They don't learn from emotions and, and you do. So they want to learn from you. You're the gods here, people, you. <laughs> okay, that's great. Now, okay, now I just went to my regular YouTube page. How do I go see the, the live thing? I've, I've never had to do this. It's always just taking me right to the page. Go to your videos and then click on um, live, like if you're in your creator account. Okay, let me go to YouTube Studio. And then videos. Okay. Then okay, live. we'll go ahead and start. Uh, can Eric tell me what is the contract my husband Edward and I have in this life? This comes from Pearl, B-H-A-R-A-T-H. Y'all, if y'all are putting your whole name, I, that means to me that you, it, you're okay for me saying it. So I hope that's the case. And that's good. Y'all give first names of these deceased. So here okay, got video oh, live, yeah. He said, I come to you in the same manner that I come to a lot of people that are meant to tap into their um, telepathy, their channeling, their healing abilities, their ability to connect to themselves and to connect to the other world. I specifically connect to mediums um, <clears throat> so that they can heal and grow and help their family members heal and grow, especially from grief. You um, have really been through a lot, Pearl, with grief specifically. You've been through a really big loss. And it's just this year that your grief is finally settling enough to cause your abilities to awaken. And that grief happened. Those losses happened for your gifts to um, come into their full power. So now I'm here to help you with that. Cool. All right, something is wrong here, okay? I have a list of these tests and upcoming, upcoming test with Amy, blah, blah, blah. Then I have our live replays, but I don't, there's something going on. You know, I've got the uploads, live, and stories. Um, live stream, let me click on that. Where's, but. Um, so when you clicked on more and you went to um, your YouTube that way, it didn't yeah. you go, because it says that you are live. So uh, what I want you to do is go back in there and cancel that, like go back and do more and cancel that. Okay. I'll do the whole thing that way over again. Okay. Anyway, we'll go to another uh, Zoom one. Uh, Morgan Murchison, good morning, beautiful lights. Any messages from Eric for me? Much love and gratitude. Okay, I was listening to what my assistant said. She said you have to go through it to Zoom or it won't go any other way. Um, yeah, so I'm just that's what I did. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. sorry about that. Uh, oh, okay. Stop live stream. Yeah. So stop live stream and then just like go okay, through. Okay, and do it again. It. Yeah. All you right. Know. So this is from Morgan Murchison. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, good morning, beautiful lights. She wants to know if there's any messages from Eric for her. Okay. He, he goes like this. Okay. So you're real, damn it. You're real. <laughs> you know, if you're not invested in what you guys are calling the dream when you're here to learn oneness teachings and all these things about connecting to yourself in oneness teachings, okay, that's what Pamela teaches. But if you also don't believe that your bodies are real, it defeats the whole purpose of being one with that body. You're real. I'm going to tap you on the shoulder right now and I'm going to touch you in your heart. Do you feel it? You are real. I'm standing in front of you and I know you feel me and I know you felt that in your shoulder. And I know you feel those emotions that I am um, pulling through your heart right now. 
So your flesh is real, your emotions are real, your thoughts are real because you are God's creating reality and form and that form is becoming real. That's what's new and advanced about this new age that you are entering. It's so exciting and I want you to know that it's real. That's all because if you don't think it's real, you're not gonna invest in it. And if you're not invested in something, then how can you make any creative, creative dis difference in this world and why would you have a form to begin with? I'll get off my rant now instead. <laughs> okay. All right. Still trying to make it work. Uh, okay. So here's from uh, Jam Cray, seven, six, seven. Love you, Eric. Do you have a message for me? Oh, okay. So even though I'm telling you, you're creating it to be real, that means that you got to pay mind to your thoughts. So for her, you are making every thought so real that you suffer from anxiety and things become a tension around you and a frustration around you. So we all can do this. We all can let little things turn into master-minded things and you are a master at your mind. So master that power and please understand that those thoughts can become real in your life right now. So please just simply choose a different thought process. Okay. He's talking about anxiety for her. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Then it says timed out. Try again. I don't know. I don't, I don't get it really. Oh, good Lord. Do you want me to go on my channel instead? Yeah, you might have to. Okay. It, it, I've, I've never had a problem with it before, so I don't think it's me th this time. Um, that is just so weird. I'm gonna, I want to. I never have a problem with it ever. So you have. I go to live, and there's only our old ones that have we've already done, and the tests I've done, you know, in the past. Um, it's a YouTube glitch, pro probably. Yeah. Um. Okay. So give me co-host. Huh. You got to, if you click on my name, um, uh, okay. I, think, I think that's it. Um, click on my name in the panelist. Like if you click on panelist, um, okay. and then click on my name and put make co-host. Okay. If I can look at it. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. I got it. Uh, there we go. Done. Okay. Sorry, people. I mean, why? Come on, give me a, let it go perfectly one time, please. I'm on my live stream stuff on my, on, on I Creator think Studio. Glitch, it's gonna, it's, if you want me to be live on my channel, it's gonna make you make me full host. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So and also, what, why do they always, you know, make it limited for mm -hmm. us? We don't talk about anything horrible. Anyway, it's okay. <laughs> I don't you. Okay. Hmm. Um, but if you go do the same thing and make me host, um, then I will be able to put it on my channel. Hopefully, unless YouTube is going to glitch me too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What do you want me to do now? Um, well, if you want me to be live on my YouTube channel and ask her questions there, I can do that. Okay. Okay. So just guide me through it. Um, just click on my name in panelists. And yeah. Make I made you co. Yeah, I made you co-host. It won't work. It I have to be full host. Oh, okay. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Got it. So then I have. Wait, to maybe I look. Uh, well, hang on, hang on. Oh, here we go. I got it. I got it. I got it. You do. I got it. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I figured it out. Finally, I'm a little slow, but now I get it. Okay. Okay. Good. 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 <sighs> okay. All right. Well, let's just uh, while that's spooling up, let's get another one. Um, hello. Hello. Oh, 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 no, stop, stop. I'm stopping. Hang on. Okay. Okay. Uh, sorry, something went wrong. That's what it is. God. It says it's live though. I know. It's trying again. All right. So, uh, hello. Uh, this is from another person who is anonymous. Are there any messages for Kiowa Greer? Kiowa. K-I-O-W-A. G R E E R. For him or from him? Uh, for. Okay. Him. 
Okay. Oh, now it's because I can't go on from here because I made you host. Oh my That's God. That's why. Make, okay, I'm going to make you host again. Oh <laughs> Swear to God. Okay, you are now host again. Okay. Okay, he said, All right, well, y'all be answering that. And he said, you know what? It's about peace. You keep asking that you want a peaceful life. You want a peaceful life. You, pe you want a peaceful life. But that is resistance. So what that means is in universal laws, when you resist something, that gives it power, and then that energy strengthens. So this is not a punishment or a reward. You're not doing something right, and then like God comes down and says, blah, blah, you are God. So you are rewarding yourself with power of energy, and whatever is the strongest energy is whatever is going to um, reflect back to you in your life. So you keep saying you want peace, but um, let me tell you what, if you really, really are somewhat afraid all the time. You become addicted to that fear. And then that's what you're getting. Peace is not what you're getting. So what if you could just trust? What if you could just say, I, I just going to give this to myself. I'm just going to, if there is a God, I'm going to hand it over. I'm going to surrender. And if I'm God, I'm going to surrender to myself. Whatever it is you believe in, surrender to God in that or in you and just stop trying to control the path of your life by dictating every single decision out of fear, because that is what you're doing. And rest assured, as long as you're doing that, that is the strongest frequency in your life. And then that unhealed stuff kind of comes back to you because this is karmic law. This is not karma for punishment. Karma for punishment doesn't exist. This is science. And what your thoughts are, are they're becoming powerful enough to come back to you and to create your world because you are powerful. So I just want you to know that. Very, very deep. Okay, um, got it on live stream. And when I tried to view a stream on YouTube, it took me to our December something or other. Anyway, let's just go forward. All right. Um, how about, love you, Eric, this is from, wait, we already did her. Floor, I am too much uh, predictable, predictable, the feelings of others. Yes, I don't know. This is I think YouTube. she means she's like, like picking up, he says she's picking up on it so much that it's bothering her. That's oh, like, okay, like, okay. So, Floor, I am too uh, predictable for other, of other people's feel, feelings for uh, others and the tendency I may feel being ignored by them. How to overcome, how do I overcome that attitude? Am I judgmental? How to fully align myself to others and be coherent with them? You are addicted to validation and approval from other people. That is an emotional addiction. When you are no longer attached to that and you, and you can honestly tell yourself, I'm really going to stop caring. I'm going to put those fears and those cares into that hot air balloon that Pamela is chasing and fly those fucks away. All the fucks that you have that you're giving, put it in the balloon, fly it up in the air. Bye-bye fucks. Bye. He said. <laughs> <laughs> so honestly, I know that's hard to do, but when you focus on connection and you um, misunderstand and misperceive connection for being approval and validation, it's not. Connection means you simply are listening compassionately to other people, whether or not they validate or approve of who you are and what you are and what you say and your beliefs. Just lose all that and just listen to them. And then you're not going to be ignored because you're listening to them. People love it when you listen to them. It is connection. Listening is connection because it promotes compassion. So just listen to them and forget about yourself, but also understand that you need to be listening to the right people. You do have that tendency to want to listen to people that don't want to reciprocate with you at all. And then that needs to be a cutoff point in your life. And then when you cut those people out, those behaviors out, then you're no longer addicted to this flush of emotion that your brain gives you when you are wanting approval and validation and you are misperceiving connection for approval and validation. Okay, I don't know. This thing is not working. Something is wrong with, because when I, when I go, go, go directly to live script stream, it just takes me to one of my old videos and nothing in the make, chat. Well, make me a host again and I will try um, to do it. And if it glitches on my end, then we know it's YouTube. Should I stop my uh, live stream then? I guess. Yeah, you may as well. I think you have to completely stop your live stream. 
Yeah, I did before I did it again. All right, so I'll make you host. Okay. Sorry for all the glitches. We know yeah, guys, I swear I'm doing everything I always do. I don't know. It is. Usually it's my fault, but this time it's, it's YouTube. going on with YouTube. I'm going to try and see if it does the same thing. Okay. Anyway, if not, y'all just go to the Zoom link that I sent through to everyone. Yeah, we have that. And go to the Q&A, question and answer. Let's see, here we go. Preparing to live stream. Um, wow, it's a, that's a long preparation. Redirecting to YouTube. I don't know, it looks like it did it for me. Okay, good. That's so weird. Do you want me to keep an eye on questions or you want to sign on to my YouTube to see the questions? No, it's okay, I'll let you do it. But uh, here, let's go ahead and take, another zoom one and then we'll take like four youtube ones from your channel okay. all right my two-year-old cousin this is from uh, gladiator 555 my two-year-old cousin died in a car accident five years ago is there a message for me it's awful when children die I hate that. except how you feel about it of course of course it's really terrible to see a child pass and you understand the great capacity of mastery their parents must hold in their potentials in their agreements wow they must be masters to be able to handle that and that is a contract between the child and the parent and look my mom's powerful enough to master it yeah it took me a while I was, I was in the remedial class. And look, here she is, and look at all the lives we're touching, and look at everything that's being learned, and all the grief that's being healed, and all the parents that are being helped, and all people's abilities are coming out. Look at everything that's happening. Um, look at that a little bit. That may help, but not at first, because with grief, it feels as if you're stuck alone in a big, giant forest with tons of trees that are just mm. collapsing into you, and all you feel is just pain, and of course, you have to sit with that for a while. Be there for the parents if you can. That's all the parents want. It's just someone who's going to let them grieve and tell them to, that they don't have to make it go away because everyone's telling them it gets better, it gets better. Well, it doesn't get better. It doesn't. The grief to a certain extent will always be there, but it will become different and it'll make you feel different and it'll connect to you, to you differently and you will emerge from it at some point whole and believe me in that and so will the parents but be there for them that's what they want and when everyone else is telling them it's time for them to be healed and whole and ready and okay you be the one that's going to tell them different and tell them it's okay okay all right that's that's great um uh all right you want to oh you want to take a couple of uh, of your youtube Peeps. Maybe I should try Facebook Live next time. Would that be yeah. better? You can do that now if you want. They're not prepared, but we can do it. Oh, no, it's okay. I, we've, done, <laughs> we've confused everybody enough. If they're, I any, know, right? <laughs> if they're half as confused as me, we'll, we'll present that as a possibility, too. I don't know what happened. That is so I, I know. I really swear to God, I know. I go more. You should, could choose live, uh, you know, Facebook Live, you know, whatever live, um, YouTube Live, it. and then right next to recording, click on that and said, go to see live stream or something, and it did not work. No. Um, okay. They so, hate me. <laughs> um, Wanda is asking, does her mom have anything to say? I, it helps me to have the name, but he is pulling her in um, pretty strongly. But just guys, so you know, it really helps with the name for, for me as the channel. Mm -hmm. I put uh, that when I post on all announced on the social media, but you know, not everybody gets it that way. So I know that I have the right person. There's so many beings out there. I know. She says it's a message that I have actually for an uncle. And now she said an uncle, so I don't know if it's your uncle or her uncle, but I think it's yours because of the way that she's pointing on your with by your by your shoulder and she said it's the smoking it's the pulling in of the you, you can't have an inhaler in one hand 
and a cigarette or smoke or something that he's inhaling, like something bad in the other. Like it's, it's that. And, and it's, that's, it's really, really bad. And he's not well and he needs to know it. Oh gosh. Okay. All right. You do a couple more. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, Oh, why do you want me to do that one? <laughs> Leslie says, what is the purpose of anti-Semitism in New York right now? Oh, yeah. Uh. Um, he's good at this, though. I'm not. He says, what is the purpose of it anywhere that it comes in? What is the purpose of racism? You, oh. large collective levels, choose to separate yourselves and then fight about it and then hate each other until you decide that you're done with it and you do this over and over and over again. But for Jewish people, it is a bring back to original sacred lens and original sacred power. You know that and you've, you've started to lose some of your sacred rites and some of your ceremonial things that you used to do. Are you talking about the Jews? Yes, yes. Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah Jewish people, he said, you need to go back to your original sacred ways and this brings you back by force and this is what you wanted in your contracts and it makes you sad. It makes me sad. But quite frankly, when you're, when you're joining together in this way to remember your original sacred uh, religions and your cultures, don't lose your culture in this. You're coming together. This is for connection and remembrance of that divinity. Yeah. I mean, we're all one. I mean, it's so silly that we attack so, other groups because we are them and the, the, they are us. And so I guess we're just going to have to keep interbreeding and interbreeding till we're all the exact same color and race and everything. That's what, that's my theory. <laughs> um, all right, go ahead. One more and then we'll go to the Zoom side if you want. Um, how are my parents, Judy and Denny? You said Judy's been resting for a little while now. Um, Denny created an entire existence for himself of what he would deem punishment. And people, when they believe in punishment that strongly, when they cross over, they create these little mini versions of hell, but it's not really real, but the mind's powerful. And you create a little realm where you punish yourself. So he did that for a little while. And then he went to rest with uh, Judy and he immediately when he saw her he asked for her forgiveness for something that was going on for over 20 years oh, in gosh. when they were alive and now they're getting ready to come back and reincarnate again and be together again and no one you know then he says no one in my family thought that we would ever be together again so that's <laughs> something but they are important. okay all right. Uh, okay, we'll take a, some from the Zoom side. Uh, Lisa Shafter. Hi, I'm Lisa. Does my mom, Robin, have a message for me? Love heals. I understand that you had to go through something where you had to cut people off in our family for a little while for love of yourself. It's understandable. They were being tough hurt you and put so your oxygen mask on first before you put it on the kid yeah so you had to do that for you and i support that you had to do that um okay you can't make them like you you know this now good you can make them like you like similar to you or like similar. you like care like similar. you huh? can't make them okay got it i want to make i want to make i figure make sure yeah, yeah. You can't make them understand you and your changes, uh, much like you don't understand where they're coming from. So that's just when they're done separating from you in that way, they'll be done with their judgment. And until then, keep keep it. Keep your distance. That's loving okay. to you. All right. Now, I got Valerie Evans. She has two. Y'all, I, I, I hope that y'all just do one because there's so many people. And so you can get, we give everybody a chance. Um, but there's so many questions people want to ask, of course. All right, let me see. Uh, I've heard, this is Valerie Evans. I've heard when you get sick, like a cold, the sickness attacks and kills your weak cells. Is this true? And if so, is this not a good thing? Where do we draw the line between sickness being helpful when we let it when it's, versus, versus remedy it with medicine? That's a really interesting question. 
He loves it. He said, I love it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you can tell Valerie's brilliant. The question she asked, geez, it's awesome. Eric said, what if it's both? You know, of course, there's something that your white cells actually want to kill germs. They're not killing your cells. They're killing invader cells that aren't meant to be there from to begin with. They're killing virus and bacteria. And yes, that's a good thing. However, in the meantime, <laughs> they also kill a lot of other cells that they don't necessarily mean to do based upon inflammatory response. And they see inflammation, they think it's a germ, boom, it, that, that perfectly healthy cell is dead. Why does that happen? Well, it's individual. It's individual for each of you. What um, beliefs created the disease to begin with? Follow that, follow the core belief. Where is the core? What emotion created that belief? And, and then that belief created that condition. The emotion will always tell you the belief. The belief will always be connected to the condition. And that's why illness happens to begin with, to make, it's your body's guidance system to make you aware that you have a condition connected to a belief, connected to emotion that requires healing and wholeness. It's the end of that, people. It's always that. Okay, awesome. Uh, I, I like this one from Valerie, so I, I just can't myself. Uh, do you know anything about magnets? I've met someone who says they can program magnetic mats to heal different ailments when the person lays on it on the corresponding shock, chakra. Any information in their properties or healing properties would be great. Eric said, would be a good topic. I'm going to write that down, girl. I love, I love that kind of stuff. He said, um, you have an electromagnetic energy field, you know, and this isn't woo-woo. You know, the aura is an electromagnetic energy field. This is science. So it is electro and magnetic. The uh, electrons are supported by emotions and all electrical circuits are sent out and, and sent out. Electrons send out energies electricity from emotions are, is projected out from your emotional energy. And then you can program what comes in and pull what comes in based upon the magnetism in the energy field. So you can program that magnetism. That magnetism is really, really strong. So we call that, you know, many, many things, but you've called it karma. <laughs> and it's just a magnetic energy field that pulls things to you or you can propel it away when you heal from conditions with your electric energy field, but your magnetic energy field actually pulls in what you call karma and you can program it. Absolutely. What about making a mat with uh, programmed with different magnets, but also embedded crystals? Would that be good? Maybe we can invent that together. <laughs> he said, yes, you can. And in that person's unique belief system, it may work. And it may no, not. But, uh, I mean, what if you, we could um, make those and uh, help people? But I wouldn't know where to put what magnet where and how to program the magnet. So oh, I guess Pamela posed all that. That's the easy stuff. We can all do that together. We can all do that together. That's the easy stuff. It's That's easy. Yes, we can do it to answer your question. And okay, good. Have to understand how it works and they have to understand um, and be willing to release belief systems in order for them to propel something away and call something in. They have to be willing to release belief systems. Okay. Uh, you want to go on the YouTube side now? Mm -hmm. um, hello, my name is Dina. My father passed in 1994. I really need names. Um, I don't get that one. I, I get your name, but I need your father's name is what I need. Um, Eric's bringing him through a little bit though. And Eric said, at that time, you were making a really valid decision that someone told you was invalid and not really important or significant for you. And then you kind of stopped your whole growth and, and just, you just, he said, it makes me sad when people um, lose uh, their parents at that age system because it's such an important age mm -hmm. and you just completely denied your whole power of your personality so go back to that age go back go into hypnosis go whatever you need to do that's why it's good because you can go back to the age talk to that version of yourself and say you know what what I was exploring at that time about myself, what I was trying to accept about my personality was true and real for me and I accept it now. 
Ah. So her father um, is just saying, basically, he's sorry that he that his passing caused other family members to say that something was invalid and, and not significant about her well-being, about her personality, about her power of her personal choices and her identity. Hmm. And he okay. wants her to go back to that time and talk to that version of herself and give that version of herself a permission to be that now. All right. Well, a couple more, maybe? Yeah, someone's saying they want me to answer Lucy's question, but I don't see Lucy's question. <laughs> I see the name, but I don't see your question. Is it just like a message? She wants a message? Okay. Um, okay. William. Let me see if there's one on this side. Okay, so Eric brought him through. And it was really, really funny because there was like two versions of him coming through. And one version had on like this corporate suit and really business type. And this other version pulled off, he had on a baseball cap and he yanked it off and he had long hair. And he said, and now I could get to be so different from that. I, I just get to play wild. <laughs> oh so, boy. Yeah. Yeah, so he's like, I want to ride a motorcycle, and I want to come back with long hair, and I want to be a hippie, and I want to do all the things that I didn't get to do when I was in my judgment. <laughs> and I want you to stop worrying about what other people are saying about you. What if you want to be yourself right now? If I can do it, you can. <laughs> um, oh, that's so that's good. Fun. We have a question from a fisherman about magnets and fish. It's, oh, really? Go for it. He said, I have a fishy question for Eric, and he made a little joke. <laughs> <laughs> Eric said, ha, 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 ha. Uh, would a small magnet on, along a line repel or attract fish? He said, um, actually, a magnet, depending upon uh, how strong it was, would push fish away. They can feel that. And that may push them away. And that's why it's interesting with certain lures, why they don't work. I wish fishermen did make a different lure when it comes to magnets and lures. They, they would make a lot more money in professional fishing competitions if they change that. It's a bad thing, not a good thing for fish. Well, why don't you just put little magnets on all the other competitors' lines? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cheating. OK, I know. Okay, let's see. I got one from Laura Miller here. I totally moved to Scottsdale, Arizona, and feel like there, um, there, I am here to do something other than the massage I've been doing for the last 20 years. Wow. Oh, God, I could use that. Can Eric see into what that is and looks like to help give me some guidance? I missed the first part of your question. It was oh, well, she, she recently moved to Scottsdale, okay. and... Um, she feels like she's here to do something other than what she's been doing for the last 20 years, massage. And she wants uh, some guidance from Eric. He said, this is a bit of an opportunity here, guys. It's for everybody, not just for this questioner, because this is a common problem on earth. Everyone goes through the, what should I be doing phenomenon in life purpose, as opposed to what should I be feeling and what should I be oh. being? Ooh. So you starting backwards. It's like, it's really, really backwards. And he's doing the chart thing with me a little bit. He said, this purpose is here. It's up here. So we start here with, with thoughts. We start here with mastering feelings. We start here with belief systems. And then when we go through one, two, and three, and we're looking at this all the time, thoughts, feelings, beliefs, then we can decide what we want to do based upon what we think, what we feel, what we believe. But we can't do that first just because it feels good or it might be neat or just because we're curious. It has to honor our thoughts and beliefs and feelings or we just, it, it's just, we can't start here. It's like yeah. going straight up to the Himalayas and the top of it without stopping at the different base camps. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay. Um, so uh, Christina Cooper wants to know, Eric, please, can you help me help let me know what's going on with my health? Health. Thank you. Love and light. Again, with thoughts, beliefs, and feelings, but for you, I, I need you to honor the fact that 
your body, you're letting your body tell you who and what you are and, and what to feel and to feel powerless. You're letting your body basically control your life right now. You're letting your body tell you basically when you have energy and when you don't, when you can move and when you can't. You are the master of it. It is your tool. It's not the other way around. So I, okay. the combination, while I completely understand like deep disabilities and problems, cancers and things that are really, really hard, you know, and you need to, your body's telling you need to stop and breathe and heal and rest and honor yourself. But in her case, Sometimes you're in the middle and it's trying to become that and you don't need to let it become that. You need to take mastery and control of your body before it becomes that by telling your body that you are its boss. Do that with your breath. Do that okay. by breathing. You could do that by eating properly. You could do that by letting yourself grieve. You could do that by healing your emotions. You could do that by many, many practices, but you're letting your body tell you who and what you are, who and what you can't do, and it should be the opposite way around. Please change this now. Okay. Um, all right, we have uh, one more, and then um, we'll go to the YouTube side. Ariel, uh, P-E-R-P-L-E-X-I-O-N. I wanna know what my life purpose is. I wanna know how to pronounce your name. Ariel. Oh, oh her, her, his name is Wayne Griswold. I just saw that. Wayne. Griswold. I like the Christmas vacation, dude. I'm kidding. That's so cool. And he wants to know about purpose. Awesome. Is that what he's asking? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Eric said, okay, purpose again. We're going to go back to this. It's up here, but it can be felt along the way. So what do you want to feel? What do you want to feel? What do you want to feel? When you get up in the morning, what do you want to feel? That's your purpose. What can you think that would promote that? That's your mission. Okay, that's a mission. What can you think that would promote how you feel? So you have feel first in, in purpose. You have thinking second, actually, when you're determining your purpose. And then you have this big treasure hunt that goes like this and this and this and this and this. And there's all these little dots along the way in that treasure hunt a purpose and it's a treasure hunt. So you're gonna go from here to 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 all these things and you're gonna go, oh my God, it made this big picture of my purpose. Well, can, can you give them a general idea of what his life purpose is and give them any advice? It's, it's about huh? how you feel with discernment. Yours is more of a heart wisdom purpose. It is compassionate discernment. So that is- What should what? he do with that? It doesn't matter because it is a treasure hunt. So again, going back to these dots, you go and you become a grocery store clerk and you feel compassionate discernment, bingo. You have started step one of your purpose by being a grocery store clerk. You go and be a banker and you're compassionate with someone that has a problem with their account. Um, that's big, you know, that's, 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 you just completely changed their life. Maybe they're not homeless now, compassionate discernment. <laughs> you know, right. and it's gonna go bigger, 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 and all these little dots of things that you do along the way are your purpose. And everybody's lives that you touch along the way are your purpose. So there's not one answer to this question. It's like a treasure hunt and you're unfolding it. And oh, but what general career path? Come on, give us a little something. In the health field, in the... No, no. one of the... What? And this is where your past lives can help you guys. So he used to dig mm. up things. He likes putting his hands in the dirt. So he likes, he feels compassionate around plants and animals. It's not necessarily always for him with other things, but around plants and animals. So how can he use that discernment to make choices, wise choices about showing compassion and teaching compassion with what involving plants and animals? So would he start a nursery? Um, would he like a start a plant nursery? Would he um, start an animal? Filter? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No oh my gosh, yeah. Would he become a philanthropist with that money and <clears throat> with that? So there's interesting things when he has his hands in the dirt and there's plants, organic farming to help people. That would be uh -huh. really compassionate. So <clears throat> he's giving him different ideas. Um, so this, the person who's asking has this real stuck thing about money. So people have this thing, Eric says, about money. Mm -hmm being like, well, I can't do that because it doesn't make enough money and then I can't survive. And if you guys keep being stuck in that circular mentality, you're going back to the, um, the, the thing that keeps you away from your purpose. 
Okay. Uh, and you know, it's so surreal, Eric, because you're giving so many profound tips in, in this age. It seems like only yesterday when you would be sitting on the toilet upstairs in your room and then holler, Mom, Finn, come wipe my butt. So, wow, things have turned around. I just embarrassed you in front of me. He's like, Mom. Oh. <laughs> It's true, it's true. He's like, by the time I run out of toilet paper. <laughs> oh, no. Well, obviously, you know, I got tired of washing racing stripes away, so. All right, uh, Spider-Man undies, whitey tidies. Okay, go ahead, Pamela. Try to follow that one. <laughs> Kidding. Uh, Eric said, good luck. Um, what type of crystal on my line will actually attract the fish? The fisherman came back. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, he said, um, oh, what is that? Oh, what, it's green? He's showing me it? I can't stand this crystal, by the way. It, it's like- Uh-oh, what, what kind is it? It's the only crystal in the world that I can't. It, it starts with a, ah. Uh, guys, you know that crystal that I can't wear. It's kind of green, like um, something Tur ice. Tourmaline or no, I don't know. What? No, it's oh. ice. It's one of those ice, like a something. It's really strong and it normally pulls in psychic abilities and it also allegedly is supposed to pull in everything to you. It's really, really strong. It's one of the strongest crystals that there is and it's kind of greenish, flat. It's an ugly crystal. Malachite? Cool. Is it malachite? Uh-uh, it's not malachite. Moldavite. Moldavite. Moldavite is what attracts okay. most fish. But he's like, are you talking salt water? Are you talking fresh water? He's talking fresh water. Moldavite well, about, fresh water. Okay, but, but this would be good for salt water. Um different one. That was just that was just smoky quartz. Oh, okay. All of the different type of quartz, but particularly the strongest would be the smoky quartz. Um, it pulls them in. And it's interesting because like most um, fish are with, with saltwater fish go for that. So depending upon the different types of saltwater fish, if you're in the deep types, like this is two different types of fishing, he says. Mm -hmm. So fishing in like the saltwater that's closer, like, like shallow, that would be the smoky quartz, but deep fishing. You want to do shiny crystals, like, like really what? shiny, like peacock ore, Ooh. Um, and um, uh, adamantine is one that does it, um, and amazonite is really, really good, and peacock ore, the amazonite and peacock ore. Or all three, you put all three on there. <laughs> He's like, you just test, test it around, but the shiny crystals in deep water fishing will attract them. Okay. Then what? You're going to bite them loose crystal, he said. <laughs> oh, oh, that'd be awful. Um, okay. Next. What's that? Oh, you want to get another one from the YouTube yeah. side? Let's see how we're doing on time. Good. We're, we're, uh, okay. We're good. So from Funny Smile 777, ask about her autistic daughter, Jeanette. Um, messages from Eric regarding her. And he said, Okay, so she's he, he does like this. He says she can't stand sounds. She's reacting to you in a certain way very aggressively because of sound. So he's telling me, and I understand this because I have um, a 15-year-old um, autistic child, and he's telling me, he said, before autism was just autism, you know, back in the DSM when we had different levels of autism there was something called pervasive personality or pervasive oh yeah pervasive and he said i wish that that was still honored that that doctors still really looked at that because it's a sensory problem yeah they're just really really overwhelmed and you know you can change that by turning down the sound all that there's too much background sound um and your voice specifically is a unique trigger because it's Hers is higher and yours is lower, but yours is stronger, despite the fact that even when you calm your voice and you're like, okay, Jeanette, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. You're, the problem that she has with transitions in her life, like going from thing to thing to thing, the transitions, <laughs> autistic kids don't do those. 
So he said the problem that she has is not specifically about transitions. It's about the fact that you're guiding her through them and you are her primary caregiver. So yeah. this is a problem because your voice is like really great. It's, it's strong. It's, it's, if you could raise your voice just a few frequencies, you would just speak higher in tone, like not louder, but you can still whisper, but you know, just speak um, like just a pitch higher, just a half step higher in your tone, then she's going to stop being so, you know, having problems with transitions. Would it help to, to um, wear earphones and play some uh, like white noise that you still hear uh, externally, but would, would something like that help? Like noise canceling things? She's so sensitive that she's, she, if you play orchestral music, that it'll be, if it's still um, like if a cello or a low instrument comes in, then she'll react to the cello and she'll be like pulled into it and be scared of it. So she's becoming aggressive because she's scared not of higher pitches, but of lower pitches. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I mean, now they, she won't they wear make... Headset. She won't wear the headset. Oh, it, oh really okay, off, okay. She hates okay. What about uh, now they make mm -hmm. low-dose naltrexone cream mm -hmm. for autistic kids for mm -hmm. their for any behavioral or, uh, you know, he said aggressivity? You that three times the amount that you think here. He said here on the back of her oh. head. Oh. Yeah, this is, this is a point for her. And for all channels and healers and empaths and people who are really sensitive to energy, this is your point. That you oh. can put that low dose of Trexone that mom's talking about. You can put that here. So go, go to find mm -hmm. an LDN doctor um, mm -hmm. and you can get it by telemedicine if you want. Uh, and but first research research LDN and let's look at the forums. Uh, Google LDN with autism, etc. And you'll because <clears throat> autism <clears throat> has an inflammatory root, and LDN stops pathological um, uh, inflammation, and it's so that it's called the why not drug. So and it's cheap. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, are are we are we ready for this side? side or well let's do one more because she's okay like a oh yeah 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 go for it i really and i think it's important um he just wanted she wanted can be wanted to know what she can do to move forward in her love relationship and wanted to know if she's in the right direction and um eric said when you have two different people that it's like sun over here and moon over here you know and there the the moon is just as bright as the sun and then you have this thought barrier in between. Your thought barriers, this person can be opposed to your thought systems. So what if you don't need connection with language and words right now? What if with this person, your degree of connecting, because every time you try to talk to this person, they're just like, oh, you're telling me what to do, or oh, I don't agree with that. There's something when she talks to that person, that person's like, I'm still at the stage in my life where I don't want to hear that. And it's, and it's more of a language barrier because her frequency when she speaks is incredibly powerful and incredibly high frequency. And he's at this frequency where the only way he can connect is through like a physical, like a, a physical contact. So don't... Okay words and you know and eric's saying also i know that he's not really giving you too much of an opportunity uh, right now with words when he just cuts you off and won't listen and, and won't do anything and there's for a reason so you can do other things you can be there for them you can send gifts you can um um write don't let them hear it's the hearing um not the writing you can write and you can text and you can uh, write cars um but basically the less words the better in terms of speaking them because you guys have a language barrier so if you want to move forward your actions and your connection without words needs to whatever you can do without words is going to help you move forward with this person oh good um all right, all right let's see paulette um hi how to quick how can i quickly bring to mind <coughs> wait how to quickly bring the mind to oneness daily until irreversible realization I mean, how, how, how can she, you know, bring mm -hmm. to mind that we are one, we are one mm -hmm. every day until finally it's just as, like, I guess that's what she means. If you want the mind to believe that you're one with this environment, 
create an environment that it can accept as peaceful and loving and real and safe. So you and your actions, in your body, and your words, what you do, how you give, how you serve creates that oneness and what you say to other people that makes them love you and connect you and feel oneness, what you do for people and with them that makes them feel these things. I can't give you any meditation techniques other than breathing because all that Pamela will tell you is calm your mind and it'll work and it will if you can calm your mind, but you're really, really not wanting to do that. And for those of you not wanting to do that and you've tried meditation techniques, I urge you to serve. <clears throat> okay, one more. We got it from Julie Davis. Hi, my name is Julie M. Okay, what is the most important thing I can focus on right now to help my me better my life? Also, she asked, does Nana still hear me talk to her? And of course, all spirits hear every thought, every every word. But so let's just answer the first one, I guess. Um. So I got distracted by your second one. He was confirming. Oh, I, oh yeah. What is the most important thing I can focus on right now to help me better my life? And the person's first name or the YouTube uh, name? Julie, Julie M. Okay. Okay. He said, now this is a person, unlike the last person who asked me, this is a person who likes breathing, likes meditation, likes <clears throat> practice and is deeply committed Okay, and she has forgotten to take care of her body. So he said, I need you to eat better, I need you to sleep better, and I need you to not forget the fact that your body is so important right now. This is the deepest thing you can do for yourself is to be in love with your body. You're not in love with yourself. I need you to find different ways to love your body. All right, that sounds great. All right, I think we will close here. You guys, I will, uh, you're gonna send me the recording, right? And I'll make it to YouTube and I'll put PamelaErlin.com, and so you can find her. She's got a lot to offer. Check her site out. Thank you, Pamela. Thank you, Eric. I love you both. I love you too. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.